This is an overview video for the new MSI Pro Z690A DDR4 motherboard built for the latest LG 1700 socket from Intel. This board falls into the budget section of the new Z690 motherboards with a great price tag of $279.99 Canadian dollars, but still comes with plenty of features, making it suitable even for CPUs as powerful as the i9-12900K. Firstly, we are going to show where the screws go on the motherboard so you know how this board is installed into a case. Keep in mind that these screws are very small and might be hard to see. The first screw is in the upper right hand corner. The second screw is right next to the front panel USB connections. And the third screw is at the bottom right hand corner. The fourth screw is next to some SATA ports. The fifth is in the middle of the board, right next to the RAM slots. And the sixth is right above the RAM sticks. The seventh screw is at the very bottom left hand corner of the board. The 8th screw, which we didn't install, is next to CMOS battery. And the ninth screw is tough to see, but it's in the very top left hand corner of this motherboard. Moving on, now we will talk about how to mount this particular AIO, the MSI Mag Core Liquid P240 Liquid, onto the processor. The back plate here is attached to the back of the motherboard, behind the socket for the CPU, and is held in place by a few screws that go through the bracket on the front and the motherboard. These four screws are arranged in a square pattern. Make sure to screw them in tight so your CPU block makes good contact with the thermal paste and processor. Now to the top of the case where there are eight screws to mount the radiator. The radiator does not have to go in these exact spots as this case provides more holes for your screws. Next up are the RAM slots and this particular motherboard has four of them that support DDR4 memory with the DDR5 area being around $10 more expensive. While the new Alder Lake chips from Intel support the faster DDR5, the availability and pricing of those kits are terrible, making DDR4 their only reliable option for now. If you are planning to go with the most recommended configuration of two sticks of memory, it is best to place them in the second and fourth slots in order to run a dual channel. To install them, you would loosen the cl two clips on either side of the selected slot, line the module up correctly, and push until you are equipped. Now we are taking a look at the M.2 slots on this motherboard, of which there are four. There is currently a 500 GB NVMe SSD from Western Digital in the first M.2 slot, which actually had a thermal cover over it, but we removed it. Out of the four M.2 slots, three support PCI 4.0 speeds, and this third one right here, the PCI 3.0. The installation for each SSD is quite simple with only a single small screw required to hold each drive in place to the motherboard. The four PCIe expansion slots are the next component of the motherboard we will go over. Of these four slots, this top one in silver supports the newest blazing fast PCIe Gen 5.0 standard and is connected straight to the processor. Each one of the PCIe slots has corresponding space on the back of the case with the graphics card ports to line up with. These other three slots support PCI 3.0 in either X1, X4, or X16 configurations. Keep in mind that the rest of the PCIe slots are running off of lanes from the chipset, unlike the top one in silver, which is directly connected to the processor. We are going to show some of the most important connections on the motherboard next, some of which we have used for our own PC build. There's a lot of them. So, get ready. First, there is the front panel audio connector. An RGB connector is next, followed by two fan headers, one of which we have used. Then, there is a big Thunderbolt connector, which is followed by three USB headers, the first of which supports USB 3.2, while the other two support USB 2.0. Now, we are coming up to these two SATA connections in black, right next to each other. 
and two front panel headers which allow for the power, reset, and speaker connections to function. But for most cases, only one is needed. This next wire is an RGB connector that we've used for the RGB hub that came with our case. And this black box block here contains four SATA connections. And we're only using one for a one terabyte hard drive. First, we have a front panel USB connector. The large wire is for the high speed USB type C on the front of our case. And this large wire is the 24 pin ATX power connector straight from the power supply. The next two connections are fan headers that we've used for a case fan and a radiator fan for our AIO. These next three connections are for fans, with the first one being for regular system fans, one for a radiator pump fan, and one CPU fan connection. These three connections are followed by the 8-pin CPU power connections right from the power supply. And while only one is needed, and for the mass majority of processors, having both connected is useful for overclocking This is the final part of the video, where we will showcase all the back panel I.O. that this motherboard comes with, which is more than enough for most users. This is the flash BIOS button. Then there are two USB 2.0 ports, followed by a legacy PS2 connection. Then there are the two video outputs from the CPU, an HDMI 2.0 port and a DisplayPort 1.4. Next up are three, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 5 gigabit per second ports, and two more USB 2.0 ports. The only Type-C port on the back is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 20 gigabit per second one with a red USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second Type-A port above that and finally a 2.5 gigabit per second LAN port above those. The assorted audio ports close out the I.O. on the back of this MSI Pro Z690 DDR4 motherboard. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you learned something and that you enjoyed it. Please feel free to drop any questions you may have in the comments down below and we'll make sure to respond to as many as we can. Consider hitting the like button as it really helps us out, and have a great day!